Hi everybody, this is Solomon. I'm gonna do a quick how-to for you. This is, uh, I focus a lot on uh, cheap beekeeping, so this is a quick how-to on a cheap hive stand. What I have here is a couple of CMUs, concrete masonry units, otherwise known as cinder blocks or just bricks if you want. You can use any various types of these. I have various types around the yard that I found. These ones were purchased because I didn't have enough, so I needed a few more. You can get these for a couple of bucks um, at your local big box hardware store, or you can go to a uh, an actual uh, masonry store or shop like that that sells these and you can get them. I got these by the pallet. These are seconds. I got about one pallet and they cost 95 cents each. So also you can you can generally find them around for free. Just tell your friends, hey, I'm looking for a couple of cinder blocks. Uh, if you see any, you know, pick them up for me and you can get them for free. A lot of these ones that I have around here, I got for free. So that's also a good way to do it. So the, the idea here is that we're gonna build a hive stand. Uh, I've got a box here. It just happens to be the only empty one I had laying around. It's a square box, but you don't have to worry about that. Just, just consider this to be a regular hive of any type of your favorite. Now you're gonna want a hive to be uh, level side to side because if you're doing any sort of foundationless or you put in any sort of comb that's not got foundation or anything, you need the bees to build straight comb, you're gonna want it to be level side to side because the comb will always be vertical, more or less. And if the hive is tipped, it's gonna be uh, diagonal. So you might start in the, in the right place, but it's not gonna end in the right place. So I just laid these bricks down here, CMUs down here, and I, uh, oh, the other tools we're working with is a level. You can use a big four foot level like this. This is a pretty cheap one I got at Lowe's. Um, you can use smaller ones if you have uh, one for leveling pictures or something. If it's not big enough to fit across the hive or across a block, you can use a, a piece of board to set on there. Actually, that's pretty level front to back, but not level side to side. Now, level front to back is not as big a thing, especially if you're using a conventional style hive where you want the water to run out if water gets into it. So you want it actually tipped forward along uh, the, the length of the frame, right? Because the frame needs to be vertical side to side, but it can be any way front to back, okay? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna pop this off here for a minute. I've decided, I, I found a, just a eight foot piece of board here. I like my hives to be about eight feet apart. So I measured eight feet from that stand, eight feet from that stand. I originally did that because that allowed me to get a riding lawnmower between them easily. You go through the, through it, through the yard one way and then through it the other way with a four foot deck and you mow the whole thing, no problem. Keep the hives separate. That'll help cut down on drifting a little bit. Of course, naturally hives are usually hundreds of yards, if not miles apart. So um, you can keep that in mind as well. All right, so we know where our boxes are gonna be, or blocks are gonna be, because our box is gonna sit on top of it. Our second tool, this is just a, a mattock or a grub hoe, or you can use a shovel or a hoe or anything. It doesn't matter, just something to move dirt. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check the level front to back. I like the front to be lower. Doesn't really matter how much, just so that it's lower, but I'm gonna have to level this, because side to side, this is off a bit. So you can see we need to drop the high side down about half an inch or so. Plus this ground is already a bit uneven, so we can drop it down a little bit more and make sure it's nice and level and has a good foundation. So, just come in here, dig down a little bit. get through the grass because as you are, as the hive settles down, as it gets heavy later in the year, it's gonna, the grass underneath the block is going to rot and it's gonna settle. So it's a good thing to do to make uh, hives every, to make hives level every year or so when you, tear a hive down, just come back with your hoe and your level and 
kind of shave underneath the block a little bit, keep it level. After once or twice doing that, your hive will stay level for a long time. Now this is level right here. Unfortunately, it's not the right spot. This back one, the block is tilted back. I don't see if, know if you can see this. But the block's tilted back, I don't want it. I want it to be, want it to be flat or tilted slightly forward. So I'm gonna have to dig down a little further. Normally this, for me, it takes seconds, but since I'm explaining this all to you, it's taken a few minutes longer than normal. All right, so this is, 20 years ago, these were all raised flower beds. This uh, property belonged to my grandparents and they raised wholesale flowers here. And I worked for them when I was a kid. I don't know if you can see, but way up in the back is, no, you probably can't see. That's their house up there, now belongs to somebody else. But I was fortunate that that other person is a lover of the bees. And so he let me, lets me keep my bees here. Also conveniently, my father lives next door and my youngest brother lives next door to him. So, it's all in the family. Okay, we have, needs to come down about half an inch on the left side. So we'll just come in here with our hoe, just kind of shave down a little bit on that side, get it level. Okay, check that out. Nope, not there yet. Shave down a little bit more. Now these don't have to be absolutely perfect. I mean, you want it to be close. You want it to be real close. But, and I'm an engineer, so I tend to be even more persnickety than other people. And now I've gone too far. Shave down a little bit on the other side. Not a problem because the deeper the deeper I get in here, the more well-founded the brick will be. Uh, it's pretty close. And the other thing, you can beat it down in here a little bit so it gets nice and settled. And now I'm off again. There's no way to get this perfect. Like I said, the hive's gonna settle a little bit, so. Don't stress over it too much. Microphone cable. All right. Front one's level, but I want the hive to face that way. And now, as you can probably see, it's way off a level. So I have to dig down in here pretty deeply. because I'm kind of on an awkward edge of this old flower bed here. So there's kind of a downhill slant. Sorry to have to make you listen to my breathing heavily. But maybe you like that sort of thing. I don't know. No judgment. All right, dig down in here. Make it relatively flat on the bottom. Stick our block back in the hole. And I don't think we went far enough. In fact, we did not. All right. It's an iterative process. A lot of times when we're doing things for dirt cheap, we make up for it in labor. It's just a part of life. At many points in my life, including the present one, I have more time and labor to give than I have money. Again, that's a part of life. Uh, 
All right, let's try this. Usually this doesn't take so long. This is kind of a difficult case. Or a more complex case, I guess. All right. Level side to side. It is not level front to back. Just about where we want. Slightly front heavy. I mean, front down. Because I want water that gets into the hive to flow out. And here in the Pacific Northwest, we have plenty of water. I live in the Rogue Valley. This is the Applegate Valley. The Applegate Valley connects to the Rogue Valley further down the river. And while it's not the weather that you might expect uh, for typical for Oregon, and more people live in uh, Portland, so that's kind of the stereotypical weather for Oregon, which is wet all year. Good there. We are wet all winter and dry all summer, so totally different. All right, there we have it. You can take some of this dirt, spread it out. The grass will grow back and Within a year or two, it'll look like one of those. And you won't have this mess. So, there it is. Put the hive back on it. There's an empty hive. I'll be getting ready to put bees in this next coming year. So there we have it, your uh, dirt simple beekeeping that is, that is my other brother, my middle brother, driving by. Looks like his truck's for sale. But I don't need a ginormous Ford diesel pickup, so, oh well. <laughs> All right, uh, if you have any questions, post them in the description, or links in the description for all the other treatment-free stuff I do. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. I answer virtually all comments. All serious comments, anyway. Um, this is your, once again, Dirt Simple Hive Stand. Oh, one more thing before I go. Uh, if you want a taller hive stand for this, you don't want to bend over to work on your bees, which is a reasonable expectation. Uh, let me grab... Gotta worry about my mic cable here. Let me grab some bricks and I'll show you how to do that. If you want a taller hive stand, just add more bricks on top. So now you have a taller hive stand. I was thinking about buying thicker bricks so that I could have taller hive stands, but thicker bricks cost more, a brick this thick costs more than twice as much as two bricks. So, because these are the most common type and so they're the most cost effective. So you can stack them up. I've got a stack over there you can't see that are four high. So like they're this high, the hive. So you can make them as high as you want. They're really cheap. They're totally reusable. They last hundreds of years if you don't break them. Uh, good to go. All right, that's all I have for now. Have fun keeping bees, because if you're not having fun, find something else.